Where's your costume at? There. Corey, that's not a costume. Yeah, it is. What are you supposed to be? It's obvious I'm Justin Bieber. Bieber? The women go crazy for him. They go crazy over a beaver? No, the Bieber. Whatever. What happens when America's most famous go head to head with America's dumbest? Today we're learning what happens when the best, brightest, and toughest collide with Chumley, Corey, and Rick on Pawn Stars. And to be fair, sure, the guys at Pawn Stars can be pretty smart at times. Yeah, even Chum Lee. But they remain some of the most disaster prone people on reality TV, even when the stars are visiting. Today, we're looking at the most shocking celebrity appearances on Pawn Stars. Because over the years, dozens of famous people have come into the shop to buy, sell, and chit chat. And while some of these encounters run smoothly, some are disasters. He was basically insulting me with the paint thing, the petty stuff, you know? That's a good looking boat. This guy doesn't know So who did Corey accidentally insult? Which superstar decided to mess with Rick? And what happened when Chumley came face to face with a true legend? Today's video contains wicked pranks, tense encounters, and some of the most embarrassing moments you can possibly imagine. We here at What Happened spend a lot of time researching topics, writing the script, voicing said script, and then editing all that together into something we sure hope you enjoy. And so if you do, hit that thumbs up icon for us, it really helps. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. But now sit back and get comfy, because we're gonna find out. Roger Daltrey. So if you know the Pawn Stars, you know Rick likes to play the tough guy. But there are a few things that turn even Rick into a little kid again. And one of those things was, well, one of the best rock bands of all time, of course, The Who. Was Rick able to keep his cool going face to face with one of his idols? So if Rick has a weakness, which he does, it is getting suckered into paying way too much for items with sentimental value to him. So whenever somebody brings in something related to The Who, you know his bottom line is in big trouble. There was that time when the ex-wife of John Entwistle, The Who's bassist, brought in a custom Walkman owned by John. Shockingly, it was Corey who overruled his dad, and they ended up paying more than $1,200 for the glorified iPod. Another time, a guy brought in a vintage photo of The Who's guitarist, Pete Townshend. This time, it was up to Corey and Chumley to haggle for the picture, and they ended up paying $425 bucks for the photo. I'm a big Who fan. I've loved them ever since the 70s. Most bands were all about peace, love, and getting along. The Who was all about kicking ass. But these deals can't compare to the time that Rick had an opportunity of a lifetime to perform with Roger Daltrey on stage. I mean, yeah. Sure, Rick doesn't exactly have a golden set of pipes, but hey, could anybody in the Who run a successful pawn shop? I mean, yeah, maybe they could. Sure, they probably could. Phil Collin. It's hard to imagine the 1980s without Def Leppard. Songs of the decade, like Pour Some Sugar On Me and Love Bites, they make you feel like Ronald Reagan is still president. And maybe you're slow dancing with your best girl at prom. So what business could they possibly have in Gold and Silver Pawn Shop? Well, it all started when a woman brought in a guitar, designed and painted by Phil Collin. So who is Phil Collin? Well, he happens to be one of the two original lead guitarists in Def Leppard. Unfortunately, she wanted 10 grand for it. So Rick called in an expert buddy. That buddy called in another expert, a guy who knew a little bit about that guitar. Who was that second expert? Well, they brought in Phil Collin to tell them about the instrument. And thank goodness Phil wasn't just there to give advice because he gave an incredible demonstration of that prized ax. Rick ended up offering the woman 8500 for it. I mean, hey, they have to make a profit, right? So what did she think? Steve Carell. Certainly you know Steve Carell. 
the guy who made The Office one of the greatest comedies ever. I mean, it's not even hard. No, God! No, God, please, no! That's what she said. Yikes, ouch. I mean, Carell was unbelievably funny and charming in films too, like Anchorman and Date Night. But in real life, it's kind of a different matter. So what happened when stone-faced Rick went up against the king of cringe himself? The pawn shop can be a very serious place. When you're haggling over a big deal, thousands of dollars can be on the line. But Steve Carell isn't exactly the kind of guy to be truly serious. Okay, so it all started when the guys recognized somebody that looked like Steve Carell. Of course, it did end up being Steve. He came into the shop looking for a World War II diver's knife. Why? I'm not sure. But when Rick found one for him, things began to get weird. Hey, maybe Steve did not know how to negotiate because he kept raising the price, not lowering it. I will give you 4000 I should have known with a guy like Steve Carell, he'd take any opportunity just to mess with me. Was he playing a prank on Rick? Well, yeah, probably. But there's really no way to tell with guys like that. Katie Couric. Over the years, Katie Couric has interviewed presidents, cabinet members, celebrities, and more. She's even been called America's sweetheart. Hey, move over, Jumly. Katie is known for maintaining her cool in kinda tough conditions. So, how did an appearance on Pawn Stars result in one of the most awkward disasters in the history of the show? Well, Katie came to the pawn shop and was drawn to a Mark Twain signature plaque. Me, I would have gone for the swords, but hey, it takes all kinds. Unfortunately, it wasn't the shop's best and brightest that was sent to help her out, it was Corey. Yeah, it might have been a mistake to let Corey deal with one of the most famous faces in America. Still, nobody could have expected how much he would have messed it up. That's right, Corey managed to confuse Katie Couric with Katie Holmes, Scientology. And then Kate Winslet, never let go. Katie Holmes? Oh, no, 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 no. Although I'd like to look like Katie Holmes. <laughs> Winslet? Before finally, Katie Perry. I mean, come on, Corey. Katie Perry? Uh, definitely no. I got no. this, Corey. Fortunately, Rick was able to step in and prevent further damage. And Katie Couric was able to buy her item. And Corey was able to recover from his bad case of foot and mouth disease. Dana White. Rick can sometimes be like a tough guy. That is compared to Corey and Chumley. But what happens when Rick goes up against someone who has really proven their stuff? Dana White is the CEO and president of UFC, the biggest mixed martial arts company in the world. To say that Dana struggled on his way to the top is an understatement. In the 1990s, he had to flee Boston and go to New York. When he bought the UFC company with his childhood friend, all he received was the name and an old octagon. Even the website had been sold to a company named User Friendly Computers. And then Dana White helped turn that company into a worldwide phenomenon. Dana White, not exactly the kind of guy you want to mess with. Okay, so back to pawn shop. Dana happened to be building a weapons room for his new house. Because yeah, we all do that. So he came to the pawn shop to look for a new sword. Hell yeah. Chumley immediately sold him one, along with $30,000 worth of other swords. Well, that sounds like a big achievement for Chumley. Well, yes and no. The problem, Rick had recently had it restored in Japan and emphasized that it was actually not for sale at all. Why is my sword out here? You know you're not allowed to play with it. First off, that is no longer your sword. I sold it. When Chumley told him about his big sale, it was unfortunately up to Rick to break the news to this fighting mogul. Fortunately, Rick did have another cool sword to sell and Dana ended up walking out with around 60 grand worth of swords. Bob Dylan. So yeah, Bob Dylan hardly needs any introduction. But you'd hardly expect to see him walking around the Vegas Strip or playing slots. I mean, yeah, I never expected to see Bob Dylan face to face with a guy like Chumley. 
How on earth did America's most famous songwriter cross paths with America's ditziest sneaker fan? Well, it all began when a seller came in with a vintage Bob Dylan album. Rick was ruthless as usual and gave them chunk change for it. But he had a plan. Bob Dylan was in town and Rick could get it signed by the man himself to blow up the value. But Bob Dylan is, you know, Bob Dylan. You hardly expect to see him just walking down the street. So who did Rick choose for the task? Somebody capable, I hope. Resourceful and smart. No, of course not. It was Chumley. Chumley stumbled around Vegas aimlessly until, believe it or not, maybe with a sprinkle of reality TV truth dust, he ran into Bob. The funny thing is, Bob Dylan isn't exactly huge on showing up to stuff. When he was given the Nobel Prize, he skipped the ceremony. So it kind of makes it even more hilarious that he took time out of his day to help Chumley and Pawn Stars out. This is your album, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I see that. How did you find me here? I knew you were doing the show, and I just figured I'd walk around until I found you. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but those episodes with Steve Carell or Roger Daltrey, man, they were good. Who was your favorite celebrity appearance on Pawn Stars? How real do you think their visits were? Who would you like to see crash the shop? And have any of you actually been to the pawn shop? Well, please get in the comment section and tell us all things Pawn Stars. If you enjoyed our video, which we sure hope you did, please hit that thumbs up icon to show us some support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what, what happened. happened.